And here we are, back at the Miasmal Citadel. That's right, Marduk and friends are about to embark on one of the most dangerous and harrowing missions yet. Because they're going to go up against a super boss. At least that's my intention. Uh, but before we get there, <clears throat> we have to fight our way through some skeletons. But before we get there, there is, there are a few uh, pathways through the citadel that I have not explored, because I really only did a uh, what the first floor. That's it. Alright, so I did some uh, off-screen preparations for this. Mostly that amounted to giving everyone magic reactions that they didn't have. Of the uh, minus 50% elemental variety. Alright, so, going left. There's a left path and a right path. We're gonna go left first. I don't know what's happening here. So, uh, like I said before, uh, I never actually did all this back in my day. And I've done very minimal reading about it, so... Stunned? That's not good. Uh, wait, what can you even do to... Oh, I know. Gem explosion! No, it skills him. Oh, never mind. Slink proving me wrong. I should know better than to talk smack about my boy. Alright. Uh. Huh. Looks odd. Speed juice. Well, you know what? Speed Juice saved uh, Legion's life <laughs> in his uh, arena run, so can't fault that. Ah, got it. Mithril Golem. We've air beat stab. Air and ether and fig. That's not that bad. Uh, just for the sake of it, take the uh, time to heal. There we are. What? You dare live after I say there we are? Alright. <clears throat> so there are gem gates. Lovely. And a chest in the middle of the dungeon. It's impossible for the super boss to be in this chest, right? Yeah, no, it's just a mithril golem. Uh, a high level mithril golem, but a mithril golem nonetheless. Um, well, we'll just do what we always do. We'll just beat on it a little bit. And this time, we're going to try a Spirit Nova for big damage. 6,000 damage. Unfortunately, there's no possible way that Slank can do 700 damage to this guy. Or is there? Now we resist fire. Never mind. But let's try it anyway. Fire stream! Oh, he did it! Nice. I am... What happened to my faith in Slank? I've always said he was the best. And now all of a sudden I'm doubting him? Wow. And we have acquired the Cursed Blade. The Cursed Blade. 
Uh, an ancient blade cursed by some powerful wizard. Whoever wields it is afflicted with the curse status effect, but so are any enemies that it strikes. It also drains the enemy's energy of its victims, but causes its wielder to bleed constantly. Huh. So it inflicts curse, it drains HP, uh, has a 10% crit chance on its own, uh, but it curses yourself, you get bled, uh, you get plus 5 to your strength, which is nice, but minus 5 to vitality and spirit. But you do learn the action com command to apply bleeding to your attacks. Uh, would I even care about that? I would be replacing probably degeneration with that. Which is probably worth it, but on the other hand, I don't want to wield the cursed blade at all ever, so... Huh. Does not sound like a fun time. Uh, and I need to find some gemstones. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess that's why there's another path. Oops. Dang it. Double dang it. That stun got me. Fire stream. That wasn't as good as the last time. Whoops, that was the wrong option. <laughs> uh, you know what? Just, that's fine. We're fine. Did I ask people's opinions of this place? Uh, we travel to so many places that reek of death and despair. I do so wish I could cleanse and cure them, purify them with brilliant light. Alas, my ability to do so was lost with my old form. This place is pitiful. Many proud souls lost their lives here for no good reason. To bring them rest and vengeance would be the honorable thing to do. Oh, the things that are hidden away from human eyes for eons, lost in the bowels of the planet. Though they're unknown to us, the planet knows. It can feel them, and places like this make it sad. <laughs> Finally! Monsters that test my tremendous tyrannical talents! Let us destroy them utterly, till naught but dust remains! Nay, not even that, for monsters disappear when slain! <laughs> well, at least someone's enjoying themselves, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Alright, right path. Black Eye, Skelizards. Um, Inferno. Alright, black eyes heal from fire. For some unknown reason. Um, what are they weak to? Air and earth, huh? I can, I can twist. Pop. Ooh, almost. Almost. Um, how about I try to ooze them? Well, that was nothing. <laughs> A little too weak, I suppose. Very weak indeed. one gemstone. Uh, I need to find a blue one? But wait, there's no other path? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Okay, 
Okay. Ooh, an evening star. Ooh, ooh. Just a drop like that? Ooh. Uh, what was I doing? Slang? I just wanted to see if he got extra RP and he did not. That's fine. I need to find a blue one? Uh, interesting. Oh, I know. The blue one's probably past the white door. Because we activated the white door. And then past the blue door is probably the, the teal one or whatever. Which means then I have to travel back to the teal one and do something else to unlock something else. Or maybe the teal one just leads to our super boss. Or maybe these are the ramblings of an insane man. By the way, just notice that what I did there? Boom. You can, in fact, press your action command key, Z in my case, and when the blue exclamation point pops up over your head for a random battle, you just skip it. I, uh, I never knew that in the history of ever, and I kind of figured it out by accident. So now I don't have to fight if I don't want to. Of course, if I had just ignored random fights this whole time, uh, I'd be very weak. Instead, I am, uh, I'm okay. I'm not strong, you know, but I'm okay. And another little back travel over to the right side, so they can send me back over to the left side, so then I can travel to the right side. Yeah. Ever since I remembered how to skip random battles, life has become so much better. Alright, so, Cursed Beret, a cursed item. Though wearing it will grant you a physical and magical shield throughout the battle, it'll also render you uncurably cursed until you take it off, meaning you won't be able to use any of your skills. Um, yeah. Bit of a trade-off. Some fig juice. And an elixir. Oh, well, I, I didn't do it that time, but it's okay. Look at this. It's just one man. What's he supposed to do against my group? Die, I guess. And now we travel all the way back out to the other side. I'm sure there's some ritual involved in all this, which is why I'm doing this. And the portal leads us to a save crystal. A save crystal. That can only mean one thing. Beyond this pathway lies Super Boss. Number one. Um I feel like that deserves its own little video, you know? Uh, so I'm just going to pad this one out Oops. by uh, rag going to my encyclopedia and going to the bestiary, because that's the last thing we have to go over. So, the bestiary, it's not quite complete. So, uh, I know these things. Uh, these blank spots over here on the right, these late game uh, blank spots, these are the uh, final boss um, and the super bosses. Uh, now you notice, oh man, but you're missing some over here too. Where are they? Uh, turns out back in chapter 2 is where they are. <laughs> I was curious and looked it all up. So. 
I, uh, for the benefit of those who want to know, um, <clears throat> number 29 here is a poor goblin. You know, like there's posh goblin and all that. Well, what about poor goblin? It's a, uh, a goblin dressed in, you know, tattered clothes and all that. Um, it's only found in the Gosnor sewers. Uh, but the Gosnor sewers are currently inaccessible because it's uh, now the... If I, I went there to see if I could find some poor goblins. Um, it's now the home of some LARPing action. You know, you know, you know LARPing. I don't have to explain that. Uh, but the the fun part there is that the the guy is dressed as a zombie. Uh, his name is Laddie, right? And uh, he kind of goes over his little backstory he came up with, right? He's he's an amnesiac. He, you know, doesn't know where he is. Whatever. He, just, he can't read anything because he forgot how to read. You know, that kind of thing. Um, that's a reference to another Flash game of the era, Sunny. Uh, it's another amazing game. Uh, not one I'm going to be playing here, but, you know, it's a very good game. Uh, Alright. So yeah, the goblins are found in the second level of the sewer. Number 37, I believe, is the Phantom, which could only be found in the uh, Social Fox Tomb area. And I just never ran into it. Kind of like the go poor goblin. I just I got it unlucky. I faced everything else and not the rare types. And number 40 is a, a female adventurer. You know, the female adventurer with the, the reddish hair, the auburn, I guess, hair, uh, green shirt, that one. Uh, well, she is in the chapter 2 tournament that I never did. So, <laughs> uh, there you go. She's just kind of, uh, it's not like a boss fight or anything. She's just, she's got some spells, some, some shield, fire, whatever, you know, who cares. All right, moving on to chapter three stuff, uh, which would be starting with Albano Bat. Look at that, pure white bat. Could be worshipped by, as a god by some places. Sekel is a, you know, flying fish. Wants to kill people. Vega. Man-made statues of Solak, the god of suns. They apparently find it amusing to make demands of priests claiming to be their god. Temperance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Posh gruel. Revenants. Fallen paladins return to the land of the living to smite evil. Unfortunately, because their brain is rotted, they don't know what is and isn't evil, so they just try to smite everything. Which isn't a bad plan, I guess. Moonstones and fire opals and topazes. It's a dupazer. In order to counter their air elemental predators, these earth elemental lizards have evolved a particularly potent fire breath weapon. Due to living in the scorching heat of the desert, they have also developed their resistance to fire. And then the blood lizards are... Uh, when a lupazer survives for many decades in the extreme heat of lava-filled desert caves, it is said to become one of these. Though whoever said that could have been lying, and these guys could just be a different species altogether. Come to think of it, that guy did have eyes that looked in opposite directions and believed that the King of Gosnor really was a reptoid in disguise. And Tarries, oh god, and Tarries. The mini-boss. An idol sculpted in the guise of Solak out of stuns, uh -huh, just, uh, just possessed by a destructive spirit from the plane of light. Reptoid warriors. Cool, cool. Amber the crystal. Nantelian. Sand marauder. The thieves, you know. Happy Johnny! Hooray! Huzzah! Hurrah! Happy Johnny is in town, and he's having a bomb, as the hood of them say in the slums. Rejoice! Yeah, right. King Cuthbert, the royal monarch on Sandflow Caves, has quite a sense of humor. Throwing pies, googly eyes, and spinning bow ties. That sort of stuff. The ladies love him for it. Right. Punk Monster. You see, they, they uh, want to overthrow the establishment by sticking it to the man. 
There's an eye stalk, and then uh, the dark elemental, monochromes. Wait, dark elementals? Dark elementals are basically just pure loathing and selfishness manifest, with no purpose other than to destroy those who are happy. And those who aren't as well! Monochrones. The reanimated skeleton of a man who has presumably died in some colorful draining accident. You know the type. Look, he has fluffy bunny slippers. Yeah, if you haven't been paying attention, yes he does. Obsidian phage, eat people. Yep. Trilobite warriors, the strongest of the trilobites of Cambria, regularly go out on adventures to increase their strength or something to that effect. Their benthic pressure spell will reduce your HP by a huge percentage of maximum, so watch out. Defeat enough of them will earn you the respect of these anthropomorphic arthropods. Melastor. Mystery man? Who's the mystery man? But who is he? Uh, the ghouls back, ghasts, uh huh. Fallen soldiers, green souls. There's a lot. There's a lot of enemies in chapter 3. Posh zombie, uh huh. The Bone Drassilon. Morix Drassilon was already a zombie before, but now it's been re reanimated as a skeleton. This time with dark rather than earth energies. Interestingly, it has managed to survive the destruction of the battleship mostly intact. Because it was on board. Roaming axolotls are basically the adventurers of the axolotl race. Centaurs are not a sentient race, but monsters, born in the mindless, soulless darkness. Monsters are essentially created by the minds of sentient beings made to represent their ill thoughts. Someone must have had nightmares about horseman hybrids in order for this to have come about. Probably some man's guilt from buggering a horse. And then the female ones use magic. Yeah, yeah. Furry biters bite you in the foot. Rogue fairy. This fairy was bad, shunned by others of its ilk. It drifts now, alone. Axolotls are a primitive kind of sentient race, barbaric in their ways, and incapable of communication with the more advanced races like humans or reptoids. They tend to be organized in small tribes, each with a small chain of command. Tweed. Yes. Rat, bat. What if you took a rat and made it a bat? Uh, oh, those silly wizards and their humorous combinations of two animals into another less threatening than either. Though really, since monsters are formed from the miasma, this is not made by wizards, but by thoughts. Bizarre thoughts. Well, I mean, bats could be referred to as rats with wings. The serpent. An intelligent, powerful serpent like this usually live in the sea. But the one that you defeated was trapped in a small cave as a child when the waters were higher. The axolotls have regarded it as a god since then, and regularly coming to its cave with offerings in exchange for blessings. Serpent headcrests are much sought after for their magical properties. Pixie! Pixies are one of the few real beings that make the dream realm their home. They are something of a cross between real life spirits and miasmal monsters. Though they have minds, their shells are miasmal rather than physical. They can travel into the minds of sentience, where they play mischief. I'll play mischief in my brain. Uh, whims, though actual living beings like pixies make the dream realm their home. More often than not, anything you'd encounter is merely a thought form or figment. Uh, a creature made up purely of the thought stuff. They are made by particularly strong and emotional thoughts, usually. The whim is a thought of highly chaotic malice. The Forgotten Phase. It's a thought form of memory and guilt. Uh, brought into existence every time you forget about someone you used to know. Though it's mute and its face is not existent, it seems to be saying to you, What, you don't remember me? Oh, I thought we were friends. Oh, I keep doing that. Uh, Carpineros. Some people say that these fish of the dream realm swimming into your heads during the night is what causes you to dream. Uh, that could be upper tripe, though. Following cultist, the chaos soul, 
Some of the Culling's bodies decayed to such a point where they were just dust, at which point the soul and mind weren't, uh, within weren't left to go to the afterlife. Oh no. Instead, they were still bound to the place, but released in this raw form, where their insanity is even more clear. And it's a fallen paladin. The true fallen paladin. Bald paladins with beards are the best. Sure. Fallen High Priest. High Priest of the Lost Monastery was a highly competent magic user, so he was a vicious opponent. His mind was the strongest in the monastery back before the sun came, and so when it did, it warped his mind less than the rest. He chose to guard the stone by choice to let no such tragedy befall anywhere else. Next level chief. Each tribe has a single chief. Which is odd, because I fought three of them in a row. Uh, I mean, uh, three of them in a fight. You know, all in the same row. But it's only one per tribe. Billion tribes. Water elemental. High orbs. The free-moving Medusa stage of the eye orb life cycle is this giant eerie floating eye. They shoot laser beams and cast spells. Angry Cod. Water Drop. Turquoise. And the Master Stone. Had to fight that guy twice. The Water Guardian. The Guardian of the Water Temple is a young human female who looks suspiciously familiar, but alone she realizes that she's not much of a match for anyone who'd want to challenge her for the crystal. So she has help from her loyal steed, which is a... Uh, I, I have no idea what that is. But she's had it as a pet since they were both small. My crack at it. It's a seahorse. Stay with me. That has lobster claws. Okay. Bangmazard. Type of lizard with skin like lava, which lives in extremely hot down areas. Its bony face resembles a bear skull. Charred bones. People died by fire. The wretched soul. Uh, the soul of a wickedly evil spellcaster who sought to take the crystals for himself to conquer the world. He's trapped in a soul cage by the volcano shaman. However, he was freed and subsequently destroyed and sent to the afterlife by Marduk. Lava blob. An animated globule of blah blah blah. An animated globule of molten lava. Out to destroy you for some reason. Truly, everything is out to get you. That's what you get for being a protagonist. Here's a ruby. Oh, these giant floating rubies are quite partial to quiet walks on the beach. Well, not really. That's just a lie, you see. Oh, I see. Fire elementals. The dank roto. The dank roto is a small dark bird-like thing that lives in volcanoes for no apparent reason. Flame Soul, or other guys who got caught by traps. The Fire Guardian. The Guardian of the Fire Temple is a large creature that goes by the name of Giru. It is wise and deeply devoted to its duty, but fair and graciously steps down when, asked, uh, when bested in order to grant the victor what they rightfully earned. Emerald. There's very little to say about these that hasn't already been said about the other gemstone monsters. It's almost like these were written in the order that they appear. Huh. Rexaurus, these big, dumb-witted dinosauroid monsters used to be kept as pets and mounts by big, dim-witted soldiers back in the days of old. The world has changed since then, and they are extinct in most places, but the Earth Temple harbors a lot of life once not lost. Tybor, it's like Drillion, but stronger. Earth Elemental and the Witch Doctor. Though they are superficially resemble reptoids, this shaman-like reptilian spellcaster... These shaman-like reptilian spellcasters are merely mindless monsters. They possess the ability to conjure up soul-type enemies. Like the ones it already summoned. Uh, the Golem. Huge, ambling, humanoid constructs hewn from living stone. They used to be used as enchanted guardians for the Earth Temple, and they still serve that purpose, even though the temple has fallen largely to ruin. They have no mind of their own, and they are merely magically programmed. They will continue to carry out their assigned task all hours of every day until turned to dust. And the Earth Guardian. 
Mu, the Earth Guardian is a rock mole, it would seem, though obviously it's not the same one that Karan Tattoo faced, because this one has a beard. A beard made of glass, yes. It seems to be a bit simple in the head, and not as serious about its duty as the other guardians. A thug. A bandit is like a thug. Murian's part two. He's back! The bandit chief that you defeated in chapter 2 seems to have made himself some of a kind of recurring villain. But that wasn't that obvious from the fact that he has his own battle music. He still searches for the crystals and swears that one day, one day, he'll get them. The griffin! A wise magical beast with the body of a lion, the head of an eagle, and the snake for a tail. In the days of old, they used to be used by Grand Guardian... Wait, what? They... They, they guarded Grand Guardians. Used by Grand Wizards as aerial steeds. The Apparition. A humanoid phantom that lurks in the Miasma Citadel. The dead look in its pinprick eyes belies any indication of its motives or how it came to be as it is. Skelizzard. Are the remains of the lizard-like creature that the Manta civilization trained as pets. The Blue Soul. These souls resemble the lacrimose severed heads of goblinoid creatures of unknown origin. They are obviously full of grief about their deaths. Um... Yeah. I was trying to think of who in the group could actually fight a blue, uh, blue soul just willy-nilly. But then again, it didn't matter, so... The black eye can see right into the very core of your soul, and when it does so, it judges you and looks for your fears and weaknesses. It doesn't really do anything with any of this knowledge, though. Mithril Golem. These automatons were constructed by the advanced Manta civilization before they were wiped out. They're extremely hardy. Taking one down is quite a challenge. Because uh, it does have a base of 5,000 health, and it gains 150 per level. Hmm. Furious Eye, monsters of the dream realm, formed with the ideas of fury and hatred, their mere glare seems to burn their, your skin. The Yellow Soul are an electrically charged wandering soul. They have a nasty disposition and seem to shock things for kicks. The Oneronaut, Oneronaut, a type of monster witch doctor that travels the dream realm via astral projection for reasons unknown. It is able to rally souls from the dream stuff to fight alongside it. Solox Spirit. This is the type of light spirit which normally possesses the Vega Idols in the Sun Temple. In the dream realm, its form is more fluid and ethereal. It takes on the guise of Solok, formed by the ideas of Solokian priests and a perverse mockery of their sun god. Dreamfish. A type of life form that uses an astral body rather than a physical one as its primary mode of existence. They are no threat to living creatures as they cannot enter the material realm, but astral travelers must beware as they, these fish have a tendency to nibble on and sever silver cords. The Red Dragon! Despite its enormous size, this proud, vicious variety of Vire Elemental Dragons can actually fit inside a small treasure chest, which is an interesting fact. It can be quite a challenge to defeat one of these, but their skills can be used to make high-quality weapons. And lastly, before we revisit this in a couple episodes after we've uncovered everything else, the Bone Demon, a terrible skeletal demon raised sealed, blip, 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 sealed raised uh, in a treasure chest by wizards long ago to keep its evil from the world. It was thought at the time to be immortal, but its bones have become brittle over the centuries, leaving it vulnerable to destruction. And there you have it. Alright, so. Uh, next time, it's Super Boss. See you then.